Cigar factory. Now, who doesn't want to be in a cigar factory? Well, my name is Mel. I'm from Mbombe, and today we are here, sitting here in Costa Rica at our small factory. And a special announcement to make that today I'm having my really close friend, Mr. Cooper. Thank you for coming down. Mel, thank you for having me down here. Really appreciate that. Yeah, welcoming me into this uh, wonderful place here in Costa Rica. Thank you, man. Thank you. Really glad to have you here and let's check out what we what we do here and see if you like it. Looking forward to it. Alright. This is where we receive the cigars or, or tobacco from Ecuador and the, all of the different countries that we normally buy. Uh, Peru, Paraguay, make some Nicaragua here. You know, Mel, there's a lot of different types of tobacco to go into an MBA, MBA cigar, and I think that's one of the things that's unique that we see in your cigars, is that you do get tobaccos from different countries here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, you know, the, we, we stress more on, on the blend, blending aspect, and uh, it, it, the more you use, the better flavors you can provide, the better, better depth of the cigar, the better complexity that you need. And that, that's what our aim is. Yeah. yeah, and you can see it in here with all the different tobaccos, not just from different countries, but you see the different primings there, the Visos, the Lajeros, the Sancos okay. here. Yeah. And they're all kind of in these, uh, they're in these bales here. And it's just amazing just being around all these different types of tobacco and seeing what goes into the scars here. So after we bring the tobacco, you know, this is where we ferment it. And we have different processes of fermentation. So this is the, the classic, what we call it a uh, classic Cuban way, which is the elongated bale. And um, the magic happens here. Right, and you know, I'm looking at a few things here, and, and it's kind of at the top here, I'm seeing some of this looser tobacco, which is something I haven't seen before in one of these colognes. Well, the reason of having these loose tobacco or the shag, you know, which is left out of the, of the, of the shavings of the tobacco once we make, them, make the cigar, or use them for the cigars, this is the left out tobacco, and we put it here so that it can hold more moisture. And the heat and the moisture, it acts like, uh, as if, as if uh, an insulation on, on the bill. So, you know, like the increase or decrease of the temperature, that how we want to control this, that all happens there. Now, you actually pulled out some of the, uh, the, long, the long leaves here. Yeah, the bunches. And you can feel they're, they're, they definitely have more heat and more heat. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now I'm looking at these, there's, there's different ribbons on these things. There's like red, blue, and I can see we have a white one here and a yellow one in the back. What's up with that? Well, the reasoning of, of this is more for uh, our, our identification in a sense like what timing it is, from where it is, what vintage it is, what varietal it is. And that, the, the reason is we mix it up in a sense like so that the, the flavoring or, 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 the, or the characteristics of each thing blend each other. And we also have a proper uh, way that, you know, how long has this, been, has, this, has this tobacco or this bunch been sitting in here and how we want to take a turn it over or how this varietal is, is, is acting with this bin. Right. You know, how, how dark you want to go, how light you want to go, the coloration, the shine, the oils, and things like that. So, beautiful. This is beautiful here. When we were upstairs, you had, we had a question about building a pillow. And the one that we saw upstairs was more, more elongated. And the whole thing is, in, in our factory, is, is we, we use our internal terminology where we call when, when the when we create a pilon, like elongated or, 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 or oblongated, we call it the Cuban style, or, or making that pilon in a Cuban style. And this particular one, which is very seldomly seen uh, uh, in, in, in any factory, that we just started doing it is here, was creating pilons, pilons in a circle, like a cylinder. And uh, the you can see here, uh, uh, Ron, do you want to see the, See how, how the tunnel is created here with, with the tobacco around it. Now this this is not this is something that has been around for a while, but it's uh, it's seldom used. And why is that? Why why, why don't we see these circular polonics around these days? I cannot tell you the reason why you don't see it anywhere else. We just started doing it very recently. I would use the word maybe a couple of years. But the idea for this is because of the air chamber inside, the air circulates a bit more in here and increases the temperature. Where we, if we are the regular Cuban style philosophy, what we call the elongated one, it might take like five, seven, 10 days for us to rotate the whole thing because the, enough heat is generated. Comparing that one to over here, this is like three days. 
So it was a lot more work to maintain no, these it, types of yeah, boilers. But, you know, like, but, but it, it, it shows that in the end product. The temperature in, in, in pylons like this, the, 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 the Dominican style pylon, increases or, or we can get it the higher temperature in a very short amount of time. So that, that, that is useful for, for, for coloration of, of, of certain types of, of wrapper leaves and also about the flavor, the more charry flavor that we are looking for in the, in the, in the Lee Hill. So that, we use this for that, that purpose. You have a, another question regarding the, the small pieces of tobacco. That we were this talking about earlier. Yes, exactly. yes. So the proper explanation that I can give is, you know, when we have a pylone made over here, we are still making these, but you know, because of the heat, the evaporation of the, of the moisture happens. And what happens is it is covered with a plastic tar all around it, and the condensation starts happening. So now when you, if you have seen, you know, many tobaccos having the green spots. Yep. So to avoid those kind of situations, you know, where the, 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 the condensed water drips or falls back on the tobacco, we have that small layer of, of that shag tobacco, which acts as a barrier or, 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 or the, the moisture is trapped into that, into those small leaves. Also has, acts as a barrier to, to have the heat contained in the pylon. So, you know, there are a couple of reasons why we use it. And, you know, every factory has their own style or way. But we found, you know, with our experience, we found this is working great for us. And, you know, the product show. Yeah, I mean, so you have a, a signature, different types of polonis uh, that you're creating. Right. And then maintaining those polonis, you put your own techniques on top of that to kind of put, put your uh, signature on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, 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 you know, like not, not taking full credit. It is, it, 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 it is... It is, it is more, how would I use the word, is different styles of fermenting tobacco. You know, like you go to a different factory, they have different way of doing it. You come here, we have a different way. And not, not mentioning, well, this, is, this is working for us. Well, it doesn't mean that it would work for somebody else and somebody else. It, it's throughout our experience here, it is getting to know people, going to different factories, learning. The learning is the biggest thing. Every day I come here to the factory, I learned something new. Just like you, yeah, you exactly, go, to, exactly. go to a different factory, there's something new that they are doing or something different that they are doing. And there is a reason behind it. It works for everybody. This kind of style works for us. And fermentation is so important for what we're putting in that end product. But you've got great tobacco you're bringing in here, right. but now it's a matter of, of doing really good fermentation technique to get that tobacco to the way you want it. Well, the, that, is, that is the essence of, of, of tobacco. Or, or, or if, you, if your tobacco is not fermented properly, you are not going to get a good product. Very true. It, 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 We've it, seen that. Yep. You know, you, know it, 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 it's, it, it, you grow tobacco, dry it, cure it, and then ferment it for five, six months. Come on, man. That's a joke. Right. You know, you saw the process here. We, I'll show you the, the box aging after this. To the tobacco that we that we bring in after we start or after we decide that we are going to use this particular tobacco, we at least give two to three years in fermenting that tobacco to reach at the standard where we can use for Mbombe or Gaia or in Cuba or, or any of this. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So this is the adding the water, with the moisture, what we call, you know, before we start building. So, so we, we are here building the circular pylon and see how the we leave the hole open for the air to circulate. Right, and the moisture allows you to better manage building the pylon, correct? That, yeah, that, that too, but it also, you know, like you need moisture and extra moisture to have the heat generated and ferment the tobacco for you. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So we're seeing this come up from the ground up here. Yeah. So this is where we sort the tobacco after we ferment it. And uh, you can see the different ribbons, you know, that, that comes when we are building the pylon. So we know what vintage is or what timing is, it is, what what uh, varietal that we are doing, so it helps. Yeah, and we sort the colognes, and, and originally they go into a cologne, and obviously they go through the fermentation process, but then those colognes are broken down, yeah, yeah. and they're sorted out here, right? Of course, each and every, each and every bunch that we, right. that we saw in each and every cologne comes here, initial sorting. Right, and you can see she's tying the ribbon on these yeah. right now, and those are going to go back into a cologne. Right? Yeah. We saw our upstairs are oh, on exactly. Way. You know, yeah. so we fermented twice, thrice. It depends on tobacco. You know, it, it is not that 
that we dictate that we are, we, this is our process. It is more about the tobacco telling us whether it's a radio. Right. And there's a heavy amount of quality control going in here to determine which of those leaves are going to basically go into which of those groupings. It is about quality, right? Right, exactly. It is about quality. Yeah. We saw building the pallone, the tobacco that goes into pallone for ferments or primary and secondary fermentation in the, in the pallones, depending what style, what kind of the, uh, tobacco that we have. So this is one more step that we take it forward is after the tobacco, come on here, Ron. I'll show you. So after the tobacco um, uh, is, is brought out from the pallone, this is the one more step in fermentation that we do. And this is box aging it. Aging it in the cedar and sandalwood boxes. So this, this probably, is, this is cedar wood entirely. And uh, tobaccos are kept here for good six to eight months again and uh, fermented, where the secondary, tertiary fermentation happens again in tobacco. This is where we think the juice of Mbombe, the juice that this factory brings to the cigar, basically this process which is, which we think is one of the most crucial thing what we are doing. Yeah, so again, box aging, not something we've seen a lot of. It's not, again, it's not a new technique, but it's not one that we don't see a lot used of. Well, it, and, and as I said, you know, each and every company, each and every factory, they have their signature thing. And this, I would not use this as a signature, but this is a process that we, that we include when, 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 you know, making our cigars. Right, and you use cedar here, and then there's examples of having cedar and sandalwood. Sandalwood on boxes, like something like here, here where, you know, uh, the quesada tobacco that we aged, the peru that we aged, are aged in these kind of boxes to get that extra oomph, that extra flavor, that extra oakiness that we have, that comes from this fermentation. Yep, so just another little step we're seeing here, what makes an Mbam base cigar special. So when uh, before we put the tobacco in, in the boxes, you know, like we, we sort it accordingly, based on the variety, which box it goes, how long we want to do it, kind of things like that. So this is the sorting table. And we're we'll, and we're looking at we'll still the tobacco here from what we were just talking Definitely about. Definitely in, in the box is only for the tobacco. Right, you know. And the filler tobacco, very important part of an end bomb based blend. I know we all talk wrap or binder, but the filler is a key component to what's going to be blend. Well, how we, we, we consider it is, or uh, in this factory is, the filler and the binder, or that bunch, is the meat. Meat and potatoes. Wrapper is just the seasoning. It doesn't mean that the seasoning is weak. What I'm thinking is that it adds an extra flavor, or extra layer, I would rather use the word, in the flavoring of the cigar. So, you know, like how, the, how complex the, the body part, the sweetness that you get, is all because of the filling. Very good. So, you know, like you start with the quality raw product, your end product has to be good. It's that simple. We have, it's not a rocket science. So, as you guys can see, this is the, our good old Lieberman machine where he's bunching the tobacco. And uh, every, every bunch that is made is cut according to the way. And we talked about this earlier also that, you know, no, there is not even a single draw testing machine in our factory. Why is that? Why not a draw test machine? Well, how, what we believe is each and every cigar, you know, we, based on the size, it is, we, we go by the way, and the experience that these guys are putting sitting on the table, unmatched. I haven't heard in this past five years, somebody giving me a call saying the cigar is plugged, or, or an, an M bomb may be plugged, or it is loose draw or something like that. So that's, that's an added thing that, you know, probably people that, that do. Helps us tremendously. So we're putting in the filler leaves, we're kind of closing them in a binder, and then they're going into these molds here that you have. Exactly. The, the, the bunches go into the mold. Oh, right. The, right. the bunches go into the mold, and each of, before it even goes in the mold, each and every bunch is away. Right. So. And then that that is the initial um, step that we that, that we that we perform. And after the, the the bunches are made, depending upon how how long we are going to sit on each and every mold of the bunch. 
And then when, when, when the apple is applied, then again, you can see the guard again. Just to make sure that there is a secondary quality control. Very good. Very good. Very good. Susanna here is uh, rolling our new cigar, the MS3 that we already have at ICCR show. She's, she's putting the wrappers on the smaller bus. And you know, Mel, I've, I've tried to do this before. It, it is a lot harder than these. She's making them look very easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I, 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 I have tried it for the past seven years that I've been coming here almost on a monthly basis. I have tried it 150 times. I don't think so I can do this. My but, fingers are too bad, probably. Right, exactly. But you can see how aesthetically pleasing oh, yeah. the cigars look once uh, they are rolled. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the final phase before it goes in the box. The labels are blank. Uh, beautiful hand, and this is where the M Bombay is made. Yeah, and now, like we were talking, putting a wrapper on, this is not an easy thing to do either. To well, get the cigar uh, bands in the right place, to get the top bang on cleanly. So, so being in the, in the retail industry as well, to to cut a cigar when a customer bites and to put this back again in, in the cellar. Yeah, exactly. Now, it's not happening. Right. So, you know, of course. So, barcoding it and putting the label. And there you go, there's your uh, finished MMB products getting ready to be shipped out to retailers near you. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for coming down here, checking out our operations. And I hope you learned something new about in Bombay. I know that you review our cigars. So really thank you for that. Yeah. And, and thank you once again, you know, like, I wanted to add, wanted to introduce Andres to, to the cigar world. Uh, whatever in Bombay is right now, you know, I would credit that 100% thing to people like Andres. Without him, M Bombay would be nothing. Yeah, there was a lot of magic we saw here, and you know, I, I always have to say, you learn, you learn something every time, and Andres' operation here, there's a lot of things that just are, are differentiated as to why the cigars coming out of here are great cigars. Yeah. So, now, Andres, thank you very much for uh, opening up your operation house over the past couple of days. Thank you, thank you. We are very glad that you come. Yeah, I'm very happy that you and Mel come to the factory together, see all the process and have new experience how we do every day in the factory. Thank yeah, you just those little things that, you know, they just all add up and they make something very special. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you, everybody, for, for hanging out for this 10-15 minutes. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Take care, everybody.